I was studying vegetable oil at the time. And then, uh, not surprisingly, in vegetable oil, you found vitamin E because vitamin E is found in... And, and vitamin E is used in vegetable to protect the oil from going rancid. So sometimes we got it into our head that, you know, uh, 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 we, 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 you know, a plant makes all these lovely things for us. Plant never make anything for human being. We just we should be thankful that we got it from the plant. So but the fact that plant makes more vitamin E than their oil tells us a lot because the oil will go bad quickly and therefore they protect the oil from going bad, what we call rancid like that. So I know you're going to ask about our body fat, this and that. That's when I can tell you why I'm specifically interested in this kind of antioxidant and cut out all the other noise because everybody and their grandmother's dog is claiming the antioxidant can do this and that because the vegetable oil is inside the cell like corn. When you eat corn, you don't feel the oil, but when you process the corn to cornmeal, starches, this and another thing, and then out come a uh, corn oil. So when it comes to corn oil, it's no longer inside the cell. It's no longer inside, well, in the plant, you call it a cytoplasm, in the plant cell like that. Now, that has significant meaning when it comes to human cell. I know you're going to ask me later. So when you process the vegetable oil, it's not really in cell. It's just like an ocean of water, ocean of oil like that. So, and yes, sometimes the processing, if it's gone, uh, not properly protected, it goes bad. If we were to talk about pure fur from vegetable oil, we have lots of things to talk not positive about. But let's think about the positive thing and how to protect it. Everybody loves omega-3, DHA and EPA. They are even more unsaturated than pure fur or vegetable oil. Yes, yes. I've, been, I've been telling people like mad, when you take omega-3, which is a good thing. Can you please take vitamin E to go with it? If it is not, this wonderful omega-3 land in goes into your blood, lands into your cell wall, and then there's nothing there to protect the omega-3. That's not a good thing. Uh, uh, first, it gets into the blood, and then they travel with a, a, a light doc, uh, a scientist called it lipoprotein particle, pretty much these are particles that have one or two proteins in it, mostly an ocean of phospholipid with the fat. So it's kind of like a, a carrier. And then they carry this to the, the gazillion trillions of cells in the body, and then it get landed onto the cell, and then it become part of the cell wall of the cell. That is the final resident place of fatty acid. People don't usually think about that. It, I know when we eat too much fat, we have our love handle this and in other places, but that is not where most of the fat, most of the fat are landed in the place that you cannot touch. It is, is it on the cell wall of the 38 trillion cells. That is five, <coughs> about 5,000 times the population of the earth and in the entire cell wall. And that is very important. While I'm at it, I might as well say it. If Think of the cell wall that contain the nucleus, the mitochondria, all these wonderful things in a cell that does all the good thing. Think of it like you live in a gated community. You want the good guys to come in and then the waste to go out. In the cell, it does the same thing. Your nutrients to go in, sugar, fat, are good things to go in, and things you don't want after the refuse is being made, it go out. That would only work if the cell wall is a properly gated community and not compromised. Now, about 80% of the cell wall is actually fat. 80% of the cell wall is fat. So that, that j just think about that. 80% of cell wall in every cell in your body and mind. I consider that to be the rudimentary, primitive way of understanding aging. I know people mm -hmm. have aging in many other things. I consider that as aging and I call it primitive because it was always there from day one before we got all this horrible illness like that. Good things go in, bad things come out. Now, now that I convince you on that, let me go a step further. In the 1980s, there was an Austrian professor. He was just obsessed by the idea 
what exactly are the antioxidants on the cell wall that protect the cell? And when he deciphered all of that, I was surprised and pleasantly surprised that 90, greater than 90% of all the antioxidants on the cell wall, they are vitamin E molecules, meaning tocopherols and tocotrienol. And less than 10% of them are, you can count it on your hand, CoQ10, which our body makes, lycopene and beta carotene. If you drive past on a hot summer day, you drive past a roadkill, that smell. If you have a stick of butter on a hot summer day and then you go back and smell it two hours later, that smell, that is oxidation of fat. We have four major food groups. Usually people think of three, I add four. Uh, fat, protein, carbohydrate, and surprisingly, nucleic acid. We need nucleic acid to make DNA. We know you should don't think about them. If you eat meat, you have plenty of those, right? Of these four, any of them seriously oxidize is no good. I give you that, you know. But for example, by the time my nucleic acid is oxidized, I am royally dead meat because, because the oxygen have gone so into the nucleus and sucked my nucleus dry and then I, I'm gone so. So, but the first thing to get oxidized is actually the fat. Because, like, that's why I told you about the butter thing. It's the lowest line food to get oxidized. So, therefore, when people ask me, what antioxidant should you take? You cut all the noise out about the 10,000 antioxidant. Then you say, what are the antioxidant that will protect the fat? They line the cell wall of all the cells in my body. Once they answer that, you got the answer. You will have a reasonable chance of li living a well active life, well meaning, age happily, and you keep yourselves happy because you have a good gated community. Then, if they function well, then you eventually, as a whole person, will function well. When a cell is ready to die, we call apoptosis, not apoptosis caused by cancer, normal apoptosis. And then in 2019, some Japanese scientists got the Nobel Prize for autophagy, which means that the time all of us have a finite time. I cannot live forever. The time will come. I'm, I can't breathe. My brain is not working. I'm gone like that. But I want to live meaningful life until then. The cell does it too. So it will go to apoptosis. For example, your white blood cell, your platelet, have two weeks lifetime and then they go away. If your white blood cell hang around for three, four months, something is wrong. Red blood cell, I only mentioned this because we see red blood cell and this thing. Red blood cell usually live for three months. That's it, you know? And then, then it, it wind down, it got a clock switch off and then it get apoptosis and then new one comes about. So in the human body is the same, but if the gated community is not kept well by antioxidant, then, then you begin to hear things like, oh, the telomer, which is the DNA inside the DNA got shortened, and then something is a short-circuited, life goes short. All of those are true, but I gave you the simplest understanding. You protect the cell wall, then everything will come back into kilter. So you, the fat in our, our fat reflects two things it probably prominently reflect the fatty acid we take, which of course, if it's a huge amount of omega-6s that you and I know is not a good thing with our industrialized career like that, our body also make omega-3. But with the onslaught of the amount of omega-6s we make, it's hard for our body to overcome that. And hence, many scientists advise us to take more omega-3 or fish oil or eat fish to help to supplement that. And then we consider cholesterol also as a fat because it's waxy, but it's not a fat in a fatty acid as such. The, the cholesterol is made by our body and it is in the cell to, to think... Uh, Think of a cell like this. So the cell is uh, 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 moving like that, undulating like that. And so the cholesterol is there to, to, to give the pliability of the cell like that. So it's not too rigid and not too stiff. If you take a lot of saturated fat, then you'll become more immobile. If you take more oh, uh, uh, double bond, uh, uh, polyunsaturated, then it's more flexible. 
Then the downside of the flexibility is it's got a lot of unsaturated bond and the oxygen is going to attack. Basically, the oxygen is not ha, does not have a life. It, it, we need oxygen to live. One in every 10,000 oxygen, they become radicalized, meaning that it had two very active uh, 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 electrons on the oxygen. It doesn't know what to do. So the potential energy is high. It's looking for something to take away the energy. Then it settles down again. And, and the best way for it to do is to go after double bond. That's just chemistry. Nothing to do with light. One oxygen is not good. One oxygen is connected to carbon monoxide. That's a bad word. You don't want to have carbon monoxide in a closed garage with your engine on. That's not good. That like that. So too little oxygen, bad news. O2 is what we live by. O3 is hyperactive. So there you have it. So oxygen have all this chameleic position. So we want O2. But when, but it is possible that one in 10,000 oxygen will go haywire. And when it does, it's going to go after double bond of unsaturated fat. And, and, and it doesn't uh, 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 screen one from the other. If it happened to be uh, linoleic acid with C18, it goes after that. If it's fish oil omega-3, it would go after that, like that. But then at the same time, we cannot eat a lot of palmitic acid and steric acid, which is saturated. If you do, then then the cell wall is unable to be pliable, and then the, the so the gated community is almost like uh, the 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 drawbridge doesn't come down. You know, just think of a castle like <laughs> it just doesn't come down. Well, if it does, because it's a creaky, you know, it just doesn't. If it doesn't come down, well then. Things cannot go in and things cannot go out. That's not good also. So I, I would say because we are kind of out of kilter by taking too much 18 carbon fatty acid, more of C22 and C25 is good. And they seem to be found in marine organisms whether it's crustacean or fish. Fish is just an easy, inexpensive way to consume. The few, very few antioxidants the body makes are this, CoQ10. CoQ10 is a true antioxidant, and the body makes it. So for whatever that is, that's something to take note of. Another one is glutathione. People call this a master antioxidant. I don't know if a master anti is more a claim that an antioxidant, yes. And it's a three amino acid together like that. So that's that one. In women, when before menopause, uh, no, uh, before menopause, they make estrogen. And I look at the molecule of estrogen. Estrogen is an antioxidant, which is why I, I am under under the curiosity that after menopause, women have more oxidative challenge. The plant makes this because in the plant, the plant does not have huge amount of fat because most of the plant don't look like avocado. They don't look like the fat in the in coconut. They don't look like that. They just look like, think of spinach, think of cauliflower, Think of things like that. Think of EGCG in tea leaf. What fat? You know, there's nothing there. So they are supposed to protect the cell. So in the cellular thing, which is low in fat, many of these polyphenol kicks into action. However, mm -hmm. when it comes to human being, we are under overweight and we are obese, we have other problems that are definitely fat related. So if that is the case, we need less of polyphenolic protection, like the polyphenol will protect the leaf. <laughs> we will need the kind of antioxidant protection that would protect the vegetable oil, the avocado oil, or this inside the seed, where the fat is. Think about that. This is how the plant makes it. So if that is the case, then the antioxidant we need, they mostly look like vitamin E molecule. Now, I have a structure here. That is a, that is a structure of tocotrienol, like that. If I purposely go out of screen, see that? The black color is carbon. The white color is hydrogen. That is to totally hydrocarbon, 
That means it stick deep inside the fat, the fat, the uh, fatty acid of the phospholipid. If I come closer to you, you see that there are three points where there's like an O-ring. That right? that's the three double bond, and hence triene. Now, if I go the other side, that's the antioxidant. That's mm -hmm. the phenolic ring, and that's the antioxidant where my finger is pointing. So, if you have this thing here. This one here is seated deep inside the phospholipid. And this one here is outside the cell wall. And if it's an oxygen radical come in, it zaps it. If the oxygen radical get into the double bond, it opens up, take the oxygen and come out like that. The mm -hmm. molecule that is an antioxidant in the fat has to look like this. 